uh, I'm, I'm very excited to jump into this card because uh, it, it was absolutely incredible. Probably right. my favorite fight night of the year. Absolutely. Let's start at the top then. We have Calvin Cater and Josh Emmett in the main event of the evening. I mean, absolutely tightly contested chess match. I mean, the first round we were talking about, like, I believe there was like 20, 21 strikes thrown the entire first round. They were really testing each other out, trying to get the footwork down, really uh, trying to time those big shots. Every once in a while, we would land. Cater just seemed like he was trying to be the counter shotter mm -hmm. the whole time. Yeah. And it wasn't the traditional Cater we're kind of used to. I mean, Cater is traditionally moves forward, puts pressure on you, and lights your face up. We didn't see that last night. He had a lot of respect for Josh Emmett's power. Yeah, I mean, you kind of have to. With, with Josh Emmett, it takes one good shot and your lights are out. This man is known for his power. He's always he's always been that guy. Uh, and, you know, Cater's game plan was more of the volume strikes. I mean, obviously, he was still throwing uh, shots that could have put Emmett out. But I felt like Emmett was just throwing with, I don't want to say reckless abandonment, because, like, he, he was very calculated with his strikes, but he was going for the KO more so than uh, Pepper and Cater was. But I, I really thought it was a good fight. It was such a hard fight to score, too, because some of those rounds were just so incredibly close. I mean, even the judges had it a split decision. All three judges had 48-47 in some capacity. Obviously, Emmett squeezing out the uh, split decision win. But uh, I, I just absolutely love this fight, and I really do believe this lived up to the hype. I mean, I, we were really excited for this fight. Even before this fight night, with all the craziness, all the KOs, all the finishes... And uh, definitely, definitely held up. Yeah, it absolutely did. And like you said, yeah, you have to respect them. It's power. And if you don't, like, you're going to get fucked up. Yeah. You're going to get, you're going to be on the canvas face down and snoring. And I really want to give a big shout out to Josh Emmett because not only was he calculated, not only was he uh, very poised, but he was making really smart decisions. Yep. Like, there were times he was exploding, but he wasn't blowing his gas tank in those explosions. He was going for the KO, but at the same time, he was being very smart about it because Calvin Cater is an extremely tricky guy to not only hit, but he's just a guy to just figure it out. I mean, his jab looked amazing last night, and surprisingly enough, I did believe Josh Emmett won that fight. I thought he won the first three rounds, but he was wearing that damage really bad yesterday. Yeah, definitely. You could you could most certainly see it on his face outside of Cater. Uh, but I'm, <clears throat> I just want to talk on the side of Josh Emmett real quick because, you know, obviously I did pick Cater in this fight. Uh, I thought after that Giga Chikadze fight that, uh, you know, there was no way. I mean, Cater looked brilliant. It was a master class against a really, really tough guy in Giga. But uh, what Josh Emmett has been able to do in his UFC career is absolutely incredible. I mean, the man is 18-2. and two. Though I did not pick him, I said I would not be shocked if he went out there and upset Cater. And that's exactly what he did. I mean, it, it's so impressive to me. And this, is, this has been a guy, I said this last night, that has constantly been undervalued, under, underappreciated. He's dealt with injuries and stuff in his career. But I really feel like this was that breakthrough fight for him. Obviously now probably jumping to either four or five, uh, taking Cater's spot at four in this featherweight division, where, you know, maybe one fight away from, from finally getting that title shot after all these years fighting as a mixed martial artist, you know, now 37 years old. Uh, I'm very excited for him. Like, just as a fighter, because he has gone through a lot of adversity in his career. He's yeah. overcome a lot. It means, I mean, look at a and W's takes the last few weeks. He's been saying, this is it for him. Yeah. It's now or never. He's 37 years old, man. And, like, this is his last run. I mean, if he gets knocked down a notch, like, the chances of him getting the title shot after that are slim to none, I yeah. would say. So it's going to be really, really, the, the pressure's on Emmett. For sure. Uh, nostalgic drop down, down, down in the chat. Well, I'll definitely be rooting against Emmett in his next fight. What a shitty robbery. Man, I you can't you can't call close fights robberies, bro. It just it is what it is. It is what yeah, it is. That, yeah, I definitely did not see that as a no, robbery. It, I, I, was I thought he won like, the fight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was either either way for me. The, I thought Cater, you know, pulled it out in round five. I thought Cater looked better in five. Oh, but, Cater definitely won four and five, in my opinion. Yeah, but yeah. um, uh, it's just it, the thing is, tough. man, when the first three rounds, like you have one strike and significant strike differences between the two, like on all three of those rounds. So when you have rounds that are so razor thin, thin close in terms of strikes landed, 
Maybe what are the other factors that judges are looking at? Maybe judges want to see, okay, is this person wearing more damage? Maybe that's why they gave Cater one of those rounds. That's why Cater won the fight on one of the judges' scorecards. Or do they go into like octagon control? Because who was controlling the octagon the entire time? Who was pressing the pace? Who was mo moving forward in that fight? And that was Josh Emmett, my guy. Yeah. You can't call that a robbery. It's just too close. That's like saying that Zhang Wei Li Yoana was a robbery. Like it's just you can't do that, man. If you wanted to do a rematch, let's do it. But until then, then you just you just can't call it a robbery. It's just it is what it is. Um, Cosmo, I wouldn't call it a robbery. An argument could be made for either winning. Absolutely, Th those those first three rounds were so razor thin close, man. I, I really want to go back and watch this fight. A question for you guys: In situations like these, would you like to see judges hand out more ties? Yes, we actually, we've talked I agree about with that, that a few times. But it's always a great topic to bring up when you have a fight like this. Um, I, I think for, I, I do think for the career, because like, it's a lot different. I bring this up quite a bit, so I'll just glance through it. It's a lot different than like, you know, playing, uh, you know, baseball or NBA or NFL, where you have 17 opportunities within a season or, or, you know, basketball, 80 opportunities in a season to show that, you know, you're the best and you can fight for a championship. But with, with fighting, when these fighters are four and seven and the fight is so close, like, and, you know, one loss on someone's career can set them back one, if not two years. I am okay with a little bit more ties in fights that are extremely close. And this fight was was so close that I really didn't know. But then you kind of run into that problem in the sport where it's like, well, how many ties are we going to start doing? You know, you give, you give the judges an inch, they might take a mile. And then it takes accountability off them, right? So if they don't know who won and they start handing out 10-10s, which are absolute unicorns, but if they were to start doing that, like it would be kind of detrimental to the sport. And then we, I don't think we'd ever see a winner because then judges could just put it a tie all the time. So mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of go back and forth on that. I mean, I, you kind of just have to pick a winner. I do think they need to be more uh, liberal with those because like they, it, you're right. I mean, it's their unicorns. You yeah. never see 10 tens. You never see nine nines. Like, Definitely, there should be more of them. I agree with that. Um, so, Ant W could have went. Uh, I thought it went either way, but the one judge giving round four to Emmett was crazy. Absolutely agree with that. And let's talk about Emmett's corner. Going into the fifth round, his corner goes, you're up 3-1. You got this. Just coast. I don't know. <laughs> what I don't the hell? Know why, I don't know why you would ever tell your fighter, yeah, you're up 3-1 going into a fifth. Even if they were up 3-1 without a shadow of a doubt, why would you tell your fighter that? It's like insane. What, it, I mean, I mean, you're you're essentially gambling that you're going to lose round five, and you never live, uh, you never leave it up to the judges' scorecard. Mm -hmm. If we know anything, and, and good old Sal boy was judging this fight. How, who did Sal have it for? I mean, what I will say is, no matter who Sal had it for, I'm actually okay with it <laughs> because it was 48, 47. So at least he didn't you know, go 50, 45 kind or of, something crazy. But I mean, my opinion don't matter. But I kind of disagree with Sal here a little bit. Um, so Chris Lee and Doug Crosby gave Calvin round two, which was usually the deciding factor in these five rounds. It's always wars. round yeah, two. It's always, <laughs> always round two. <laughs> we need a shirt that says it's always round two. And then Doug Crosby and Sal D'Amato gave Calvin four and five, but Chris Lee did not give Calvin round four. He gave him two and five. But I feel like the How argument... Do you give Calvin... Oh, okay, Calvin. Sorry, my bad. He didn't give Calvin round four? No, he did not give Calvin round four. But That's I crazy. thought if it was going to be like any reasonable judging and pretty simple, straightforward, without any doubt, you could say Calvin for sure won the championship rounds yeah, for four sure. and five. Yeah. So in this case, I kind of have to maybe side with uh, nostalgic here. I wouldn't say it's a robbery, but to not give – he did give Calvin two rounds, but – Four and five are for sure. So if he would have gave Calvin round four, then Calvin would have won the fight. I mean, wow. or would have been, no, actually would have been a tie. So I just, it's, that's crazy to me that he did not give him round round four. And yeah, this, that's Nostalgic's making a great point here in the chats. He said he was getting out kickbox in the third round and just tried to steal rounds in the last 10 seconds. And he definitely did steal one of those rounds in the last 10 seconds because he did crack Cater and had him a little bit uh, on his heels. He also said a lot of his punches were blocked off of Cater's forums. We got to talk about Calvin Cater's defense because it was on fucking point yesterday. There was those exchanges where Emmett was just unloading shots. And I think maybe 99% of those got blocked every time. 
Cater's defense was on point, so that is a factor. But he was stepping backwards the whole time. And in those rounds where it's so close, man, you almost have to factor in who's moving forward, who's controlling the octagon, and that was Emmett. Uh, Joseph Blotty, happy Father's Day. Do you think the wars finally caught up to Cater? P.S. Eddie Wineland announced retirement. No, I think Cater just... If Cater made a couple adjustments, it would have been decisive Cater victory, man. He was just... I think he was a little bit too respectful for Josh Emmett's power. But, I mean... If you put yourself in silly situations, man, you're going to get a well, silly outcome. And let's think about this. You could, at 70 miles an hour, hit Cater with a semi-truck, and the guy's not going <laughs> unconscious. I mean, it's just fucking bonkers, the kind of chin this guy has on him. It's it's absolutely insane. I definitely do not think the wars have caught up with him. I mean, no one seems to be able to finish Cater because he is Superman incarnate. Uh, so, I mean, it is what it is. As far as the side of uh, Eddie Wineland retiring, I'm really glad he did. Uh, that Cody Stamen fight was brutal. What I will say is, dude, Wineland is a tough son of a bitch because he took a lot of shots up against the fence yeah. and uh, did not, you know, he didn't go to sleep. He didn't go to sleep. He just got, you know, he just got finished, kind of uh, standing KO. But, uh, you know, Wineland's had a really good career, man, and, uh, you know, wish him nothing but the best. Yeah, and W will end on this. Uh, four and five are the most clear rounds of the fight. How do you mess either of those up? It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. I in mean, this case, it is what it yeah. is, dude. In this case, if, if the judges' scorecards are like this, and, yeah, Cater, I guess, did win or should have won on the cards because he, for, if they're going to give him round two, if Chris and Doug are going to give him round two, then he had to give him round four. Yeah, I don't how do you not give him round four Where he give him round two? knocked him down? I mean... Weird. That's kind of crazy. Fuck it. Make it a tie. It is what it is. It is what it is. Like Dana says, you can't leave it up to the judges. No. You can't <laughs> the leave best, it up to the those best judges. in the world. <laughs> Bro, you can't leave you, you can't yeah, leave it up to those goofballs. <laughs> Can't, dude. They're nothing but goofballs. <laughs> the, I love the chat last night from Cosmo. He's like, just tell your fighter that Sal Diamato's ref or, or <laughs> judging, judging yeah. and then he'll go he'll go for the knockout every <laughs> I mean, time. You have essentially, to. you have to, man. Sal did I mean, not fuck. too bad. But. Sal was actually eh, Sal right. wasn't too bad today. Wasn't too bad. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's get into church coin picks. Uh, obviously, we both took Cater. We all thought that his uh, boxing technicality and skills were going to show out, and they did at some points. Yeah. I think if he just gave a little less respect to Josh Emmett, I think he would have been a more decisive victory for Cater. Right. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, I did put 1,500 church coin on Calvin Cater, and my prop bet was also 200 church coin on unanimous decision for Cater, and I did not hit on either of those. Yeah, so I put 460 church coin on Cater and then tried to uh, you know hedge my bet a little bit with an Emmett KO for 75 church coin. Didn't hit on either one of those. Uh, so altogether, I lost like 500 and something church coin. 